So guys, we are only two blocks away from uh, the Trevi Fountain. So uh, only here you can see the remains of uh, the oldest uh, Roman aqueduct that was uh, called the Virgin Water Aqueduct. Uh, um, this was the one built by Agrippa uh, 2000 years ago to supply the water for his private uh, term bath. And the Trevi Fountain that we will see uh, next uh, is the terminal point of the aqueduct. That's why I really want to uh, show you the remains of the aqueduct because, uh, oh, you see a lock. Wow, so the lock lovers usually are on the bridge, uh, on the bridges of Rome. I never seen uh, something like that uh, by the aqueduct. By the way, the aqueduct is protected, but I'm sure you will be able to see the remains of this incredible example of the Roman architecture. Uh, is the uh, Virgin Water Aqueduct. Of course, a part of it is visible on the street only here and the majority of the aqueduct is only in the underground. So this aqueduct, according to Frontino, was the curator quorum, you know, the man in charge to study and to write all of the most important information about the uh, aqueduct in Rome. Uh, he wrote that this aqueduct was uh, built by a wish of Agrippa uh, for his private uh, uh, term bath. We don't know yet if uh, the uh, aqueduct was, uh, um, I mean, uh, part of the aqueduct is visible in the city and uh, part of the aqueduct is in the underground. For sure, the aqueduct is still supplying the water uh, to the Trevi Fountain, which is the terminal point of the aqueduct, to the Fountain of the Four Rivers, the one by Gialorenzo Bernini, located in Piazza Navona, and then to all of the uh, incredible number of uh, little tiny fountains located in central Rome. You know, in Rome the water is drinkable, so if you are looking for some water in Rome, you don't have to buy the water. So if you buy the water, it's a big mistake. The water is drinkable in Rome because uh, um, every single aqueduct is uh, supplying the water in the city, but they come from the outskirt. i give you an example for the one of uh, the aqueduct uh, uh, supplying the water um, coming from uh, the Bracciano Lake, for example. So, um, in the past, in ancient Roman times, uh, the number of the aqueduct was uh, about uh, 14. There is a park in Rome which is called uh, the Aqueduct Park, where you can see the remains of uh, the amazing construction uh, built uh, by the Romans. The aqueduct, part of the aqueduct, uh, Claudius, is still visible and is not far away from uh, the Colosseum. And the one we have seen before uh, is the uh, Virgin of Water Aqueduct. So now we are going to see the terminal point of uh, the Virgin of Water Aqueduct. According to tradition, uh, this aqueduct has been called the Virgin Water because of the spring, the source of the water was found by a Vestal Virgin. Uh, the Roman soldiers were feeling very thirsty after a battle, so they met a woman. She was a Vestal Virgin, as the mother of Romulus and Remus in Roma. We love so much Vestal Virgins. Uh, so um, she gave some water to the uh, soldiers because uh, she found the spring, the source of this uh, uh, incredible uh, water. And then Agrippa built the aqueduct as a sign of devotion. So where is the terminal point of the aqueduct? That is the terminal point of the aqueduct. The most beautiful fountain ever, which is uh, pretty well known in uh, all over the world. People come from uh, all over the world to toss the coin inside of uh, the fountain of the wishes. That is the Trevi fountain. The most beautiful late Baroque fountain because it was uh, erected in the 1742 by a wish of a Pope. If you just uh, take a look in the upper section of the fountain, uh, you can read uh, all of the inscription. Uh, well, uh, Pope Clement XII, Pontifex Maximus, which means Pope, Aquam Virginem, Virgin Water. So can you just uh, see the central part of the fountain where the water is uh, coming out? 
we believe that this is the terminal point of the aqueduct, so that's why you can see a natural waterfall, because it's the terminal point of the uh, Virgin Water Aqueduct. So why do we call this fountain the Trevi Fountain? Because the Trevi in Italian means three roads. So the fountain was built at the end, at the junction of three main roads. And this point is the terminal point of the aqueduct, exactly where you can see the little tiny waterfall. If you just take a look in the middle of the fountain that was designed by an architect called Nicola Salvi, uh, you can see that on top, first of all, there are four sculptures representing four ladies. They are the personification of the four seasons. Then right in the middle there is a big niche that reminds us the niche is uh, inside of the pagan temple where stands a statue, a pagan god. This is Neptune. Neptune is pulling two horses. Uh, the one to the left, the wild, it looks uh, excited. And the other one to the right that look calm. So both of the horses uh, symbolize the state of the sea. Okay, so wavy or calm. And then I take a look at the ladies to the left and to the right. The lady um, holding a bunch of fruit uh, symbolize the fertility of the water. But it's interesting to see also the panels uh, decorating the fountain on the main facade. To the left, you can see a man uh, in the upper section in between the two columns, a man dressed like a Roman. Well, this is the emperor who is going to read. This is Augusto, is going to read from the end of Agrippa the plan for the construction of the aqueduct. So Augusto was taking the decision, uh, agree or not agree, about the construction of the aqueduct. Of course, uh, I remind you that Agrippa was uh, uh, basically the same one who built the Pantheon, so he definitely had the right connection with the emperor, because he was not only a politician, but he was also uh, the son-in-law of Augustus. And then have a look at the panel to the right, where you can see a lady, so the virgin lady that I just mentioned to you before, who found the sewers, the spring of the water, and then she is going to give some fresh water to the poor Romans that were feeling so thirsty after a battle. So why this fountain is so popular in all over the world? Because it became the fountain of the wishes. So if you have a wish and you are in Roma, you cannot miss to toss your, to toss your coin. Do you know how many coins you have to toss? I can see that today uh, the uh, policemen have decided to close the fountain. I came here uh, last week because I wanted to take some new photographs for my website. So I went down the steps with a photographer and I took some pictures right in front of the fountain. So I feel blessed because today I think they decided to close part of the fountain for security reasons. By the way, if you are planning to be here, the fountain will be open. As I told you, it's a day of a big vacation for the Italians. So if you are by the Trevi Fountain, you have to toss the coin in the right way. What does it mean? You have to come closer to the fountain. Then giving your back to the fountain, that is important, you can toss your coin with your right hand. Right hand, left um, arm. Okay? That is a right hand, sorry just the behind of your left shoulder so sorry but it started to be definitely too warm and uh, i'm surrounded by the pickpockets meanwhile i'm uh, uh, you know filming that for you so i have to pay attention so how many coins uh, can you toss inside of the fountain one if you want to be back to rome okay only one if you have a wish if you want to be back then a two for love. If you have a wish to get married, to find an Italian boyfriend or an Italian husband. And then a three coins if you want to get divorced. Well, this is just a joke. Don't listen to me. Uh, we believe uh, <laughs> that the only, coin, only one is the coin that you have to toss. Okay, three coins is just a joke. In Italy, we say three coins to get divorced because uh, we definitely pay more. The lawyer, we pay more to get divorced instead of to get married, but it's just a joke. So what we do with all of the coins collected in the fountain? Well, it's really interesting because uh, every single week before of the pandemic, uh, the, all of the coins collected were about uh, 2,000 euros per week, and all of the coins were collected by the Red Cross of Rome to help poor people, uh, unemployers, uh, and uh, especially homeless. 
So if you toss your coin, you're all, you are going to help also the people that are suffering now. I think uh, after the pandemic, they're suffering more. Okay, guys, so I hope you have enjoyed this uh, quick taste to the Trevi Fountain. I'm going to leave it because I'm surrounded by the crowds and to me it's getting impossible. So I think I'm going to have a, a gelato first. Uh, that is a place. Like, come with me. I'm going to take you in the gelato shop and then uh, we will uh, uh, meet you uh, next uh, to see the Pantheon uh, because it starts to be definitely too busy. Mamma mia. Wow, let's get inside of gelato shop. Fantastic. That is a place where you can have your gelato, your homemade uh, gelato, but Rome is full of gelato place. And uh, that is another suggestion, gelato or granita, which is uh, another speciality of uh, Rome city center. So andiamo, let's go to the Pantheon. Uh, we are eating to the Pantheon next.